Welcome to our Vespers Communion service. This morning during the sermon, we discussed the role that our relationship with the Jews has played in our practice of Christianity. And um, I thought it would be appropriate to celebrate some of that Jewish tradition within our communion service this evening. As many of you know, it is most likely that the Last Supper, the uh, supper that we are celebrating here, was actually a Passover supper, a Seder supper uh, that Jesus and his disciples participated in. We don't know that for sure, but it is likely. And so I thought I would borrow some elements from that Jewish celebration and add them to our communion celebration. Uh, I am taking uh, prayers from a from this book. It's the Haggadah, uh, which is simply Hebrew for the telling. And this, this is the book that contains all the prayers and readings and songs and hymns for the Passover meal. So let us begin then with the sanctification of the day, the blessing of the day from the Haggadah. Now in the presence of loved ones and friends, before us, the emblems of festive rejoicing, we gather for our sacred celebration with the household of Israel, our elders and young ones, linking and bonding the past with the future. We heed once again the divine call to service, living our story that is told for all peoples, whose shining conclusion is yet to unfold. And then at this point in the Passover meal, the festive candle would be lit. <clears throat> Happy are those of steadfast faith who still can bless the light of candles shining in the darkness. Rejoice, O earth, in those who keep the way, for there is still song for them within you. In praising God, we say that all life is sacred. In kindling festive lights, we preserve life's sanctity. With every holy light we kindle, the world is brightened to a higher harmony. We praise you, God, majestic sovereign of all life. And it would have been at this point that the Lord Jesus, on the night of his arrest, took bread. Took bread, and after giving thanks to God, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant, sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the saving death of our risen Lord until he comes again. 
And then for a closing prayer, I'd like to share yet another prayer from the Haggadah. This is a prayer against plagues. Each drop of wine we pour, each bite of bread we break, is hope and prayer that people will cast out the plagues that threaten everyone everywhere. They are found, beginning in our own hearts. The making of war, the teaching of hate and violence, dispolation of the earth, perversion of justice and of government, fomenting of vice and crime, neglect of human needs, oppression of nations and peoples, corruption of culture, subjugation of science, learning, and human discourse, the erosion of freedom. Let us end with the singing of amazing grace, that amazing grace that stretches throughout history into eternity and covers all of us who are God's children. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. When we've been there 10,000 years, bright shining as the sun, We've no last days to sing God's praise than when we first begun. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your Sabbath. We'll see you next week, Sunday morning.